Treepwood, we must talk. Hey, you! Hello, Treepwood. You sent me on a wild albatross chase for La Esponja Grande and promised me it would cure the pox. But after fending off sexually ambiguous merpeople, a giant manatee, and your crazy ex-boyfriend, what do I get for my trouble? This sorry excuse for a kitchen sponge. La Esponja. Ah, I noticed you strategically left out the Grande from this worthless piece of junk. Once it cured my piddly leftover pox, it didn't have enough mojo left to cure Elaine. It's not worthless. It is merely... young. It must be brought to maturity in order to reach its voodoo-absorbing potential. Brought to maturity? How am I supposed to do that? Give it a talk about the sponge birds and sponge bees? Like all infants, La Esponja needs nourishment. It must be fed six special voodoo courses to bring it to adult size. What sort of meal is that? A feast for the senses. The menu, Treepwood. Take it, and serve the sponge a meal unlike any other. And then? It will grow. Hey, neat! There's a map of the Flotsam Jungle on the cover. No more listening to bees and birds and boars for this mighty pirate. Hmm. That's odd. Hmm. It's like a whole new map now. I better fold this up before I put it in my pocket. Hey, you again. Hello, Treepwood. You've been lying to me about LeChuck all these years. My ways are my own, Guybrush. But rest assured, I have never lied to you. You're lying right now! All this time, I thought LeChuck was an inhuman monster. Actually, he was an inhuman monster, but only because you made him that way. Did I? Or was I merely playing my role in a much larger play? Stop trying to confuse me. We're tired of being puppets in your chess game. This is no game, Treepwood. You corrupted LeChuck and sent him out to torment me in a lane for years. I'll never trust you again. I don't require your trust, Treepwood. Only your heroism. About this feast for the senses? What would you like to know? The first course in the feast for the senses. The napkin. What's up with that? The table must be set with an eye-catching napkin to entice the sponge's hunger. The antipasta? Explain. With the table set, a powerful aroma must encourage the appetite to grow. I think my nose has been in shock since traversing the inside of a manatee. I'm sure you will find something. Can you tell me about the palate cleanser? Before the main course, the palate must be scalded clean by a powerful taste. Ooh, like Grog? No, not at all like Grog. It says here that course four, the main course, is the sixth sense. That doesn't even make sense. Ah, but it does. For where the other five senses are limited to the finite experiences of the present, the sixth sense satiates the appetite for the infinite possibilities of the future. The future? How do I feed something the future? You already hold the answer to that question. Can you give me any more insight about the antipasta? I can't say what exactly would be appropriate for the Feast of the Senses. Fetid sweetmeats, perhaps. Dry, aged, deep within the jungle. Something of that nature. Oh, appetizing. Palate cleanser. Hmm. 
Something of such grand flavor as to send the senses back to square one. Big flavor. Got it. What about the dessert? This is one hungry sponge. Ah, what is your favorite thing about dessert, Guybrush? Running out before the check arrives? No, it is the pleasurable shock of something different. Ah. It says the feast for the senses ends with a bellowing belch. Do not worry about this. If you provide La Esponja the first five courses, the location of the final course will undoubtedly reveal itself. Ah, my favorite type of responsibility. The one that takes care of itself. All right, enough about the feast for now. I met Coronado de Cava. My beloved. How was he? Mad. Bipolar. Life ruined. Just another pawn sacrificed in your theater of the damned. I never meant to cause him harm. Sure you didn't. Come on, admit it. You were manipulating Coronado. Coronado was never touched by my voodoo, even though he sometimes begged to be. Uh, I'm not sure we're talking about the same thing anymore, so I'll just shut up. Have you seen Elaine? Of course, even if you have, I won't believe you. So whether I have or have not does not matter. Well, if you do, tell the Chuck and then have him tell me. So, when I was with Dakava, you might have felt something strange happen. Ah, you are no doubt alluding to your brief possession of my physical form. Ha! How did it feel to be the Manipulate Ted instead of the Manipulate Tor for once? It was curiously liberating. You're weird. Yeah, try not to get executed before I cure Elaine. As you wish. Look, Chuck! Hey, Brush! I would have bet my good hand I'd never say this, but thank you. For what? I've caused you nothing but despair. For taking the fall back there, and for exposing the voodoo lady. I don't know what to make of any of it, but now I can focus on saving Elaine and dealing with the pox. It is the very least I could do. But be careful, Guybrush. I'm always careful. This from the guy who proposed to his wife with the cursed engagement ring you stole from my hold? Is that a dig? Is the evil demon pirate LeChuck developing a sense of humor? This is weird. Really, thanks again. You don't need to thank me, my friend. I merely spoke the truth. They say that truth is the greatest barnacle scrubber you know. Where have you been? I thought you were with Elaine. Well, after leaving Spinner K, Elaine and I set out to finish releasing all those monkeys I'd captured. After we were finished releasing the last of them, Elaine caught wind of your trial, went into a poxed rage, seized a passing clam schooner, and made a beeline for Flotsam Island. That's my girl. Needless to say, I took my own vessel and headed after her. But in the middle of the night, my ship was sunk by a rogue wave. I was washed up on an island of cannibals, from whom I deftly escaped using many of the self-same skills you taught me back on the Jerkbait Islands. You know, it's amazing how easily man-eating tribes can be reasoned with. Knowing I needed to get here more than ever, I lashed together a few bits of cannibal leftovers and warthog sinew to build a makeshift raft. Unfortunately, that was soon eaten by the sharks. Oh no! So I swam. I swam as fast as I could for three days and arrived just in time to save me from the gallows. Nicely done, buddy. Kudos to your swim instructor. I was fueled by the fire of our budding friendship. Have you seen Elaine? No, not since she left me in a poxed rage. She's been doing a lot of that lately. I can't believe the voodoo lady has been pulling your ghostly slash demonic strings all these years. It came as a shock to me as well. But her diary spells it all out. You, me, Elaine. We're all part of the Voodoo Lady's malevolent plans. 
malevolence is in the eye of the beholder, Guybrush Treepwood. I know this is difficult to understand, but things are not as they seem. No, things seem remarkably convoluted, which is what I've come to expect from you. I've always had your best interests at heart. Well, what about my interests? Without your meddling, I could have lived a normal, happy pirate's life. Ha! The destiny of LeChuck has never been normal. Well, how about the Mountain of Ice on the roller coaster of the Dam? She was behind that? Especially that. I risked life, limb, and manatee to get La Esponja Grande, and it's a puny, worthless lump. What? Soak up the gargantuan wonder that is La Esponja Grande. That is La Esponja Grande? But wasn't it supposed to hold infinite amounts of voodoo? I know. What a crock. The size of the sponge is meaningless. It is what you do with it that matters. Oh, yeah? yeah? Well, well, you, you fight, fight like, like a... a uh... <laughs> <laughs> the sponge is still small. Most unfortunate. So, Miss Spooky Pants gave me this menu which will supposedly put more grande in my esponja. Excellent! You wanna put some of your newfound deductive reasoning to the test and help me figure out what I need for the menu? I'd give my beard to be able to help you, but I'm afraid my pirate mind is not fit for such things. Which explains why after all these years you still allowed me to get within a nautical mile of you with a bottle of voodoo root beer. Got any deep thoughts about this voodoo menu? I'm afraid I'm useless here, Guybrush. Sit tight, buddy. Once I save a lane, you're next. Don't worry about me. Stan! Threepwood! No hard feelings over all those various civil and criminal charges? Water under the bridge. Great. A bridge with a fast-talking shyster-slash-salesman dangling from it. Mm -hmm. Still trying to make a buck on my recently cleared name? Nah, I sold all that junk to that Dooro sap. I've moved on to the next trial of the century. Flotsam Island versus LeChuck and the Voodoo Lady. Yeah, how are sales going now? Great! People can't get enough of the Voodoo Lady's murky moral ambiguity, mysterious unexplored backstory, and her ample... La 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 la, I'm not listening, la la la... Voodoo charms. And as for the Chuck, well, let's just say the Lady Pirates love, love, love a tale of redemption. The whole bad boy made good angle. Ugh. Have the Voodoo Lady and LeChuck been put on trial yet? Have they? It's the trial of the century! E, e, e. Wait, I thought I was the trial of the century! E, 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 e. Yesterday's news, Threepwood. So, what kind of case are you building against LeChuck and the Voodoo Lady? Oh, I'm not prosecuting them. I'm defending them. What? Why? Why do I do anything, Threepwood? Money! Pieces of eight! Filthy lucre! That voodoo lady babe is loaded! Funny thing though, she only let me take the case if I defend LeChuck, too. Funny like a peg leg. What kind of souvenirs could you possibly be making out of the voodoo lady and LeChuck? Oh, ye of little faith! Feast your eyes on the all-new People vs. LeChuck and the Voodoo Lady collection! What's this? That's a little decorative pin I've whipped up. Trial of the Century 2. Electric Voodoo Loop. We're still working on a type. What's that one? That's our Curse Cutlass of Kaflu LeChuck doll. Press the button for its special transforming glow. What's happening? Uh, it's a little bright. Yeah, we're still working out a few kinks. What's that? It's my entrancing Voodoo Lady dashboard good luck charm. Ugh, disturbing. Mm, on second thought, say no more. I don't suppose you'd be willing to sell me your eye-bending jacket. Give up my jacket? It'll be like Samson getting a buzz cut, or King Arthur losing Excalibur, or Bluebeard dying himself blonde. Uh-huh. Without my jacket, my salesman Mojo would wither away faster than a hothouse orchid in a pizza oven. So, that's a maybe? Sure you don't want to sell me your pupil-defying jacket? It's for a good cause. 
This jacket stays with Stan until it literally falls off my back, Threepwood. Have you seen my wife? Have I? That crazy sea devil hit me up for one of my patented and perfectly passable porcelain power pirate treasure maps, before hightailing it for the jungle. If we're lucky, that thing will keep her going around in circles for weeks. What was that? Huh. Something sure shoved a short sword up his aft sail. for all the trouble found Jacques he told me what he told me what what did the monkey tell you The singe will pay for this. This must have been broken in the fight between Morgan and the singe. I hope the vole escaped. It's broken. The singe. It'd take a seven-year correspondence course in mad sciencing before I'd even have a hope of fixing that thing. Darn. No more bananas. Curse you, banana god! Lepidoptera flotsamus accelerus. Like many of its more common cousins, the sharp-toothed flotsam island moth has a penchant for noshing on articles of clothing. Where flotsamus accelerus differs is in the pain of its bites, which can be quite annoying, and the rapidity of its meals. A swarm of flotsam moths can strip a man down to his undergarments in mere seconds, assuming the notoriously finicky moths approve of his wardrobe, of course. It looks like the singe is using my hand to make something called the jus de vie. Did the singe murder you, too? Auto trepanation helmet. Hmm. Ow! What is it? My thumb! God, did that. Blah. Vampiridae flotsamus sucrosus, the flotsam jungle firefly, are a common sight in flotsam's jungles, which they never leave. Although possessing no natural enemies, the Flotsamus sucrosus has a notorious sweet tooth, drawing it inexorably to bodies of sugar water.
The Thakalian wind control device? What is that creep doing with it now? It's locked. Oh, no. This is where the Marquis keeps all the severed limbs of the pirates he's operated on. Hmm. Hey, you never know when a sack of severed legs is going to come in handy. Or footy, as the case may be. Sorry. Beard's hair dye. Hey, no poaching. I have called dibs. I think I may be lost. Shouldn't there be a creepy voodoo shack right about there? There was. Until they came to arrest that pox spreading voodoo lady. What happened? First came the flames. Poor Senor Nipperkin went up like St. Elmo's fire. Then she emerged from the conflagration, mumbling ancient curses with every regal step. I never forget the baleful stare she fixed me with as she was left away. A look condemning me to a lifetime of suffering, shame, and regret. Spooky. And if that wasn't bad enough, I, I haven't found one bit of cool voodoo stuff in the wreckage. Come on! Mob justice can be so unfair. What a shame. That rug really tied the shack together. Even when it's burned to the ground, the voodoo lady's shack is still creepy. Huh. Looks like the light of the shack's embers has attracted a swarm of jungle moths. That probably explains what happened to the voodoo lady's rug. Whoa! Uh-oh. Huh. Looks like these finicky moths won't eat a jacket that's encrusted with bacon grease, fish water, and manatee guts. Lucky me. little fellas check out these high def duds well that's just great the lamp's dead well, at least Stan's sign is keeping the moths from returning to the jungle Stan guy brush old pal can I take another look at your voodoo lady and LeChuck goo gaws can't keep your eyes off him huh what's that one that's our cursed cutlass of Kaflu, the Chuck doll. Press the button for its special transforming glow. 
What's happening? Uh, it's a little bright. Yeah, we're still working out a few kinks. Hey, now, what's this? A fuzzy flying fan club? Ah! Hey, knock it off, you nutty nibblers! That, ah! That hurts! Sweet, ah! Fancy! Ah! Moses! Ah! Ow! Ah! Ow! 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 Ouch! Well, that was one heck of an experience, eh, Threepwood? It's a good thing old Stan always keeps a few spare jackets in the back office, or I'd be defending my clients in the all together. Say, that's not a bad idea. Stan S. Stan Man, naked attorney at law. You've got nothing to hide, and neither does he. Um... No time to chat, Threepwood. I've got business cards to print. Sweet. Even though it's been reduced to rags, Stan's jacket is still a sight to make eyes sore. You know, when I dreamed of becoming a mighty pirate, I never imagined that one day I'd be tying eye-popping napkins around the non-existent necks of mystical sponges. It's all dressed up and ready to eat. I better fold this up before I put it in my pocket. Steering clear of the dartboard. And now that I've found me darts, I need to practice before tomorrow night's tournament. What's that artistic abomination? Ah, that be a painting of Flotsam Island's notorious jungle beast, painted by our own Hemlock McGee. Hemlock? Really? Aye, no one knows more about our legendary beastie than old Hemlock. Hi there, double peg. I hear you may know something about Flotsam's so-called jungle beast. None have seen the jungle beast, but tis the scariest, false, melanous thing you ever didn't see. A dark jungle god that walks the land only by dead of night. Dark jungle god? Aye. Was said to live within the stomach of the god of death, feasting upon corpses. Until one day, death ate some bad shellfish and upchucked the jungle beast into existence. <sighs> but if you haven't seen it, how do you know it exists? Because it eats. To appease the beast. We've left many a fleshy sacrifice on the jungle altar. By morning, the meat disappears from the altar without a trace. Disappearing meat. Yep, jungle god's the only explanation. See ya.
18, 19, 20, and X marks the... When I get me hands on that plaid-coated scallywag, I'm going to rip off his waving arms and beat him to a briny pulp with him. What are you looking at? The secret to eternal life. Le spectre de Grand César! <laughs> Doesn't look like Elaine's in any immediate danger. Hopefully she won't commit any unforgivable atrocities before I finish enlarging my pox-curing sponge. <laughs>